Right, good afternoon folks. It's been a little while since the last video. I've been that busy doing other bits and bobs as well as stuff to do with the garden. So we'll do a little wander around and a bit of a tour. Now I can't show you down that direction at the moment because that's where the new project's going on and that's I'm going to keep that one under wraps until we're sorted out. But as you can see there's my little mini potato forest. That's doing okay. Some of the back ones now are starting to drop down. They've all flowered, so they're slowly going down. But I'm going to leave all of these ones because they're second earlies and main crops. I'm leaving it till all the top goes dead. The only ones that won't do straight away are these ones here because they were the last ones in the ratty. So we'll see how they go. Got some cucumelons. I've made just made a quick tower up for them to climb up. A couple of little hanging baskets. They're just there getting established and then they'll go out the front of the house. Had the, that bit of the garage roof repaired. I'm just waiting for the builder to come out and just finish off the last few tiles on there just to finish it off. But he's done a nice job in bringing it right down low so it doesn't have anywhere for the water to go underneath. But yeah, it's all been refelted. All the gutters now relinked back up to me IBC. See that one is almost half full. So I've got to transfer some of that over soon. Got yellow courgette I planted up. Tub there. I've put um, two Turks cap squash in that one. Two Ishikuri squash in that one. So I haven't decided where I'm going to put them yet, mind you. And one, all the usual rubbish and detritus sitting outside. Um, some tomato plants. Now these ones, I've got three different batches of these. I've got some here, some in the polytunnel, some in the greenhouse, because I don't know what variety they are, whether they're an indoor type, outdoor, or what. I've just got given a load of them, we haven't got a clue. Um, that one there is pineapple tomatillo. There's two tubs of them there. And there's one chocolate habanero chili just shoved in the middle. So they'll stay out here now. I'm just going to leave the cover like that just to keep them sheltered for a while. Let's have a little look. Right, these are the chilli plants. They're doing okay at the moment. There's the other, the ones that are tomatoes I said that were in here. <coughs> Excuse me. I've put a couple of cucumbers into the pots on here. I've run some string along the length of the greenhouse so and then i'll feed each one on there and just let them go together so hopefully i'll get some decent ones the white wonder cucumbers that i had that there was supposed to be an outdoor type the only one i've got still left alive is the one that's in the polytunnel so they were rubbish there's other chilies what i've got to do with this now is i've got to remove the top of the bench because then I'll put all the chilies from over there and these ones here all along on the bottom shelf there. Which means it'll get a bit better light. I've just got to get the last of the stuff out. There's the last few flowery bits for the wife. Not, not really interesting for me. Oh, that's my leek still down there that need to really go in the ground. Let's have a look. Right. As I didn't get the specific bed i wanted sorted out i've planted the jerusalem artichokes into the tub again but what it actually is i can't get a picture at the moment but this was three quarters full of the moss that came off of the roof of the garage when i scraped all that off of up there with the jet wash it just hooked it all off and brought it down I raked it up, put it in that, and I've just topped it off with some compost on top. But they seem to be doing okay. Bloodfish and bone in there as always. We have, I've got to be careful about my pictures here because I can't show down the garden. So I'll come this way. We have all the sweet corn. Now, obviously, ideally, I wouldn't have planted it right next to the peas and the beans because obviously it's a high crop, but I didn't have anywhere to put them at the time. Um, obviously peas, they're all starting to pot up really well. So we're going to have a, a dinner off them, probably not tomorrow, but the following day. Got 
the kale. We had the first of this the other day for dinner. That's really nice and strong flavoured. Obviously, even more of the peas. Loads of them. Uh, the Swiss chard. I'm probably just going to pull that out because, to be honest, I think I prefer the kale anyway. Um, now, this is one of the courgette plants I put in, which was the shooting stars, which, as I mentioned in one of my early videos, is like a, a climbing one. It wouldn't climb. It was going to die, so I had to just let it go. And it's not doing very well at all. Um, that's a normal courgette plant under there, but that's actually doing really badly as well. Hence the reason I've got the other one in the tub. I can't actually remember what that one is. That's, whether it was a shooting stars or a normal. I don't know, that's still got a few. That's the only marrow plant that I had left that survived that went in. I've just dumped a few leftover tomato plants in there. They're just wandering wild. But yeah, as you can see, more peas. So we're going to have lots and lots of peas. And the beans here, I've just given them a wash off because they were covered in black fly on some of the lower bits. But yeah, we're start, starting to get a few little ones. And as we know, they don't take too long. You can see you're getting quite a few up there. There. So that won't be long. All right, onions are all up. What have I put in their place? I've got one Turk's cap squash, one ishikuri. There's a couple of Swiss chard. There's another uh, bl a black kale. So we're going to see where that goes. I've just got to sort out the rest of the bed. Again, I'm not lifting the camera up because I don't want anybody seeing over there. No sneaky peeks. Into the jungle. Start off on this side. So another one of the chili plants here. Now these ones are doing a lot better in here. I think because they've got better heat, better air airflow to the plants. So they're doing a lot better in here than in the greenhouse. So I think next year it'll be a, a delegated bed, purely one side just to the chilies. But yeah, we're starting to get some fruit on that one. No, yeah, yeah, very, very small ones on there. Starting to get a few little ones on there. Quite a few on this one. Again, loads. Now, again, this is another one of the shooting stars courgettes. Now, the idea was it was going to grow up the pole, and I was just going to tie it in as it went up, but it started looking really, really sick. So I cut all the ties down, let it lay down, and it started picking up. Now the courgettes on these are, I don't, it's hard to say, they're a lot thinner, nowhere near as bulky as the normal ones, and the plant is like a triffid. It's taking up so much room. So I, I definitely won't be growing those ones again. I'm just going to stick to the normal plants. Now, obviously the spring onions have all become well overgrown. So what we may end up doing is leaving them as long as I can, then harvest them and do some pickled onions. The white one, the cucumber, is the one that's running up the pole there. There are a few more fruit on there coming up, but I don't know how well that one will do. Um, the aubergines, I'm getting quite a few flowers on those, but I've, again, I think I'm overcrowding everything. I'm trying to fit too much into a smaller space. So I've got to sort that one out a bit. Now, the beetroot idea worked really well. Now I'm taking them out. The tomato plants are getting a lot more room to grow. And they're doing really well. Obviously the carrots. They're doing okay. Now, these are the other, even more chilli peppers. Yes, I know, chillies. So... I think that's a Hungarian hot wax, that one. I'm going to start checking them. I've never grown before. That one, I can't remember what it was called. Um, let's have a look. Hot banana. So it's it's a mild one. I, I think it's more like a, a bit of a sweet pepper. But I got that one without realising it wasn't hot. But it will still get used up. Obviously, a couple more kale plants. There'll be some more of that coming off for dinner. Now, onions. We have 
Now, with the onions, I cocked it right up. I couldn't find the piece of paper that I had that wrote all the brands down. So I can't remember. This is the elephant garlic. Now, I'm quite disappointed with these. Um, there weren't many that came to anything. I think I've only got about three that have done proper bulbing up. The others, I think, are just done individual cloves. Got the little scapes drying out there, so I, I may plant these, but then you're looking at a two-year before you get an actual full bulb, so I might just buy some fresh in. I think what I did with these is I listened to too many people. I didn't go with my own instinct. I planted them too deep, and I think they had real trouble getting out. But we'll see. Anyway, that's one of the batches of onions. That's the snowball ones. Now... These ones, the larger ones, um, without, I think they were sensui, but I can't remember 100%. Now, with onions, I've decided I'm not planting sets again. The bulk of these ones are the ones I grew from seed. Not only are they bigger, they also didn't send anywhere near as many for bolting up. Now, obviously, some of you, if you don't know what bolting means... It's when it does this, it sends up a flower spike. Now, obviously, this one didn't quite get to the size of the flower. But what that means is that this one stem has gone hard through the middle. So, right in the middle of the onion, there'll be a hard chunk. Now, these aren't any good for storing this top when they're like that. But what I can do is I can use that one fresh. I'll just cut it up, take the core out, and just dice it up normally. But it just means I can't dry them and hang them up to store. But there was only a few of the ones... I left that one there to show you, but there was only a few of them that grew from seed that that happened to. The sets, I had loads of them do it. So there's a load in the freezer. I've chopped them all up, took the bad bits out, and then froze them. Now this is some more of the garlic. There's one, two, three different types there. There's a fourth type up there, which is probably my favourite one. But again, I can't remember the name, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to save some of them for seed and probably some of this variety for seed. These ones are a bit too small for my liking. They're okay. It's one of them. I'm going to work it out as I go along. But now, that's another cucumber. We've got four more aubergine plants. Two Cape Gooseberries and three more pineapple tomatillos. Obviously, that's the garlic. That was my attempt at doing a really rubbish plat. <laughs> now, all these ones are all the shallots. So they're all drying nicely. Now, again, the only ones that really did any good were the ones I saved from my own seed, which were the germor. They've come up really nice and chunky. Lots of them, a lot healthier, and they were much, much better sizes. I mean, they really poncy ass little things. There's a few decent ish ones in there for, you know, what you call the shallots, but I'm not overly impressed with the rest. I mean, I actually had a couple of varieties that didn't come up at all. But, yeah, just a little piggy. So, there'll be some more roasted beetroot for tomorrow's dinner. Take a few more of them out again, and I'll keep you clearing around the tomatoes even more. You can see some of these beefsteak ones are coming up really, really well. Nice sizes. But yeah, other than that, there's not a lot more to say. Um, let's see if I can get some light. That's a bit better, I think. Right. Um, as I said, it was just a quick tour around to see what's going on. Oh, wait a minute. Almost looking out the back. Can't have you seeing. All right. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll speak to you next time. Cheers.